Hi, my question is for Lana. Lana? Lana, Lana thank you. Lana. Um, regarding uh, privacy, uh, the privacy of youth and the stu and waivers and the student IDs and library cards and all of that, how did you guys work that out? Long process, um, part of the two-year journey. So we um, went back and forth with OUSD's legal department uh, about whether to do an opt-in or opt-out procedure. We really wanted like a blanket that OUSD is moving forward um, with, with this initiative. Um, and we um, suggested text uh, to OUSD and their legal department. And we thought it was going to be an easy process, so that it was just very informative for parents that this is happening, um, and explain the uh, memorandum of understanding with the library, um, and, and ensure parents that um, the value really, the library really values student privacy. We hold on to that closely um, to sort of um, help with any concerns about that. What happened this year is that the text uh, that we wanted for the parent enrollment packet uh, was not exactly what we wanted. Um, so we're having to do some catch up with parents, school communities to really get um, the rate of parents opting in for this program a little bit higher, which is why we're a little bit delayed this year. Other questions? Right here. Oh, sorry. The Teen Academy. Did the idea come from you? and the library or from elsewhere in the city and other department? That's a great question. Um, so our director, um, she, uh, Tamara Lebeau, she goes to a number of, um, I wanna say just like city conferences. And this was actually something that the city of Sacramento was doing. And she saw that presentation and brought it back and said, you know, the library would do this really well. And I said, yeah, it would. And she said, do you wanna do this with me? And I said, okay. <laughs> So that's that's how the Teen Academy happened, basically. So we kind of made, we definitely didn't uh, do exactly what their program was because their program had hundreds of kids in it. Um, we couldn't have done that, uh, but we made it work for us, and I, I think the the product that we ended up with was great. Hi, this question is for Nancy. Okay. Um, so I was just curious or I'd like you to clarify for, it sounded like you had a very difficult time with the school district with getting the memorandum of understanding through. Um, is that correct? Um, somewhat, I'd say no. Oh, okay. So when I was, I, so the memorandum of understanding, it to, that was already in place before I was even on board. Oh, okay. So, before I started on the project. So I was waiting, there were um, people above me that were working on that. And we, but I was still in the loop of getting the information of whether it was going to be approved or not. So. so at the end of your presentation, you gave some recommendations for moving forward, and it sounds like you've learned a lot. So I'm just curious if you could summarize like what your approach is going to be for the the coming sc the school year after the school year when you're going to sort of try to increase your um, library card holders at the school district. Wait, could you repeat? I'm sorry, could you repeat? Oh, okay, so, so you said that only one student came to pick up a card? Yes, but we distributed, we still distribute the rest of the cards. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And that, so they were distributed through the, um, the homeroom teachers. Right. So we provided some talking points. Okay. Um, but in terms of next year at the class registration day, the, the plan is definitely to have the library as a scheduled required right. to-do list for the students. Okay, all right, thank you. Hi, this question's for Adam. Um, in, oh, I'm sorry, no, not you. I've got the oh, wrong okay. name. <laughs> Glasses guy, other guy. Sorry. Other guy. <laughs> I went out on a limb there for a not joke. Good it with really names. backfired. Sorry. Well, my name's Nathan. I'd sorry. be happy to take the second question to me. Thank you. <laughs> Here at SFPL, we've been working on a program for teens, these stipending teens, um, to get experience working here at this library. Mm -hmm. And we've really been struggling with not perpetuating systems of inequity through the application process. 
And I figured you're probably facing having the same conversations when I look at your aspirational photo that you put out with your call for applicants compared to the applicants that you received. And I'm wondering, have you felt like you're gaining any insights? Have you made any improvements that you could share with your own processes? For intake? The two-page application, I think you know where I'm going. <laughs> well, um, it's, it's kind of a tough balance, because at the same time, we want the program to be taken seriously, have good discussions, make sure that they come all the time. Um, with that being said, we have all kinds of teens come into interviews. Um, all of my photos were from the first year. Um, uh, for some reason, you just have more photos of your firstborn. Um, <laughs> but uh, in the, in the second, second year, we, I think we had a little bit better of a diverse group, both um, you know, across the board. Um, and as far as that goes, uh, I, I don't think that the problem is the two-page application. Um, I think it's just getting the word out and going to the right places and talking to them. And uh, I think we could be improving our process uh, with that, and I intend to. But yeah, that's, that's what I've got. Thank you. This is really for anybody who's on the Student Success Initiative. Have you guys seen an uptick in the use of any particular databases, or have you seen um, things that you can kind of attribute to getting those library cards out there? I'm just kind of curious what the, if you've seen positive results that you can share with us. I can share, I will share one sort of related story. I mean, we, we are still in the beginning process, um, so we are not at the point yet where we can, we can start to look at those things, but we want to in the future. Um, one of the positive things is that we did a professional development session uh, for a school that we're gonna roll out the ID and library card to, and we have a new feature at Oakland Public Library for teacher cards. So every single teacher that was in the professional development session signed up for a teacher card. Uh, so that even though we weren't ready to give students their own library card, the teachers could start to access our online resources. And like I said in our, my presentation, we really tailor our, our workshops with the teachers to show them exactly what they need from the public library resources to fit in with the curriculum. And we work with school library staff to make sure that we're addressing that in those sessions. So eventually we may see, like because of those recommendations and databases, we may see uptick, upticks that way. And for San Jose, we don't have access to that data yet with the way, with the current system that we have, so. But we win it. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm with Solano County and we're doing the student success card through Rio Vista where, I, where I'm at. And um, I was just wondering, you had mentioned that you're going to formulate some of the metrics and the outcomes that you're gonna use to um, identify whether or not this is success. And I was just wondering where you're going with that or what you're thinking um, as to what kinds of things you want to, to measure or to say, look, this is what we did and this is how we know we've done, done a good job. I think that might be a question for Carol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's <laughs> Sorry. Right. Just, just with the larger PLP grant. Yeah. I think that's a good question. Um, it's easy to create baselines like how many students have library cards right now. Um, but it makes me think of what we heard earlier from the earlier panel about how do you quantify that and turn that into a story. I think the fine line is that I think, uh, I think we are good at telling stories, like how we can change a person's life or things, something like that. But a lot of times schools don't care about that, they want the hard data, and so it's almost counterintuitive, so I think we're gonna take a multi-pronged approach. In the 1718 um, uh, session of the grant, we do have about 10 or 12 hardline data metrics that libraries can benchmark at the beginning, and then uh, to, to the question that was just asked, then they'll be able to build on that and then, and then show growth in the program. We have time for one or two more questions. Does anybody, anybody have a question for Adam? Let's give Adam a question. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty sad if not. He's up I'm here. Sure the plant in the audience. 
this, this question is for Adam. <laughs> yeah. Which Adam? Uh, real Adam, not <laughs> yeah, fake I'm Adam. Ready. But Let's you're see. fake Adam too, so it's... Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering if you, uh, if you felt like you actually broke through people who were sort of entrenched in their belief in fake news sources. Did you, did you notice any progress with the people that you were working with on the fake news? Oh, thanks. Yeah, definitely. Um, so anecdotally, there were mostly seniors at the first two programs. And they came in with comments like they don't know what was fake or true anymore. They didn't know what was reality. I think they're coming from a time when they had some trusted news sources. People are throwing around the fake news term a lot, so they seem pretty confused uh, and lost out there. Um, I did have this, this nagging feeling that I'm just confusing them more and making them question reality and feeling completely in the dark. Um, so hopefully that's, hopefully that's not what happened. Uh, at the game show, we did have a lot of fun. The people who were there uh, were really engaged. Um, and we went through like 10, 10 questions or so. So I think once you have the hands on and go through like actual uh, examples, I think that's when you really see a difference. But people after the first two did come and thank me. Um, there was a couple people who came to the conspiracy theory ones who were pretending not to have, you know, they just accidentally happened to come to this event at the library at this time. And then they knew every conspiracy. Um, I don't, I think I just, I think I just got them more excited about conspiracy theories, really. But <laughs> thanks for the question. It's great. <laughs> Sure, we're a little after, but yeah, sure. Well, um, I was actually really sorry that um, you were so pressed for time, Adam, because I really wanted to hear a little bit more about you know, who you were targeting with these programs, how many programs did you have? Were you able you know, to, you know, it seems like it was already asked, like if you were successful, if people felt more confident after, after um, attending your program. De yeah, definitely. So I would like to offer my help to anybody who'd like to contact me. I'm sure Emily feels the same um, um, about fake news and examples. We're both kind of sick of the fake news topic, I guess, too. But um, no, we're you know uh, any questions that you might have, we'll definitely answer. Targeting people, we didn't really. I, did, I just put these on. We have a lot of adult programming, so we're lucky that um, over 20 people came to each thing. The fake news game show. Those seniors that came to the first two. Um, there are only three that came to the game show, and we used people in the library and staff. There were some college students who were really engaged with it. Um, so, and then we took it on the road. Um, so we did it at Kiwanis, and that, again, I've shown it to my friends and family, and just when you start showing them fake news articles, people seem to like, really like that stuff, so. Thanks. Thank you. So we're gonna break and be back here at 35 after um, for our last two sessions, thanks.